Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi horror film called Mimic. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In Manhattan, cockroaches are spreading a deadly disease, and a large number of children die. Desperate to stop the epidemic, Dr. Peter Mann, head of the CDC in New York, calls on the aid of entomologist Susan Tyler. Susan uses genetic engineering to create an insect hybrid called the Judas bug. The Judas is a hybrid between a termite and a mantis and is designed to release an enzyme that accelerates the cockroach's metabolism, causing roaches to starve to death. Susan designs the Judas to have short lifespans, making sure they all die in a few months so that they won't disrupt the ecosystem. Peter and Susan release Judas bugs, and the cockroaches die off. In a short time, the disease is eradicated, children are saved, and Peter and Susan are married. Three years pass, and a priest is seen running from an unseen attacker. He's trapped on a roof, but whatever is chasing him tries to break open the door. The priest decides to scale down the side of the building. The unseen attacker catches up to the priest, and the priest falls down screaming. He dies upon impact. A young boy from an adjacent building, Chewy, sees the priest being dragged into the sewers but thinks nothing of it. Peter and Susan are preparing for an insect exhibit, and Peter expresses his excitement for starting a family, handing Susan an herbal tonic that could help with conception. Peter then arrives at an investigation scene where police have found illegal immigrants and are holding them in a building. Peter's colleague, Josh, tells Peter that the inhabitants have yellow fever. The building is also a front for illegal activities, being run by the priest who earlier fell to his death. Peter then orders the quarantine of everyone in the building as well as the first responders to the scene. They also find fecal matter on the ceiling and a hysterical woman raving about a dark angel coming to kill her. Susan arrives at her insect laboratory with a friend, and they're met by two teenagers eager to sell her insects. One of the kids asks her why she likes insects so much, and Susan tells him she admires insects for their ingenuity and intelligence. Insects have been around even before the dinosaurs and are still alive today, making them a highly successful inhabitant of the planet. Susan explains the importance of each member of an insect colony, from the drone or soldier bugs to the queen. Susan expounds that the drone bugs maintain security and gather food. They also guard an essential part of the colony, the nest. If the nest is invaded or destroyed, it could mean the death of the entire colony. All male members of a colony are sterile except for one, and it's this single male is the only one that can mate with the queen. If it dies, the birth process might get interrupted, and the entire colony could die off. Wanting to get more money, the kids offer Susan a weird bug they found in the subway, and after some negotiation, Susan gets the bizarre insect. Susan later notices that the weird bug's container is moving. She tries to open it carefully, but it bites her. She's immediately alarmed and tells her friend they have to find the kids who sold it to her. She gets her equipment and slices the container open, discovering that the weird bug is a Judas bug from three years ago. She tries to examine it, but it bites her. She then stabs it with a pin, killing it. Seeing the weird bug secrete a white ooze, she's sure that it's a Judas bug. She reviews her old research notes but cannot seem to find an explanation. As she looks through her files, she doesn't notice a figure approaching her window. The shadowy phantom enters and makes its way to the Judas bug. Susan takes a confirmatory enzyme test, and the result comes back similar to the Judas bug's enzyme test from three years ago. The dark figure makes a sound, and Susan goes to check. She sees that the Judas bug has been taken, and her lab equipment has spilled to the floor. She looks through the mess but finds nothing. She notices a shadow moving in the darkness but could not make out what it is. Suddenly, the figure flies past her, out through the window. That night, Chewy sees a strange shape moving in the street towards the building where the illegal immigrants were discovered. His caretaker, Manny, checks on what Chewy is looking at but sees nothing. Susan informs Peter that the specimen she got from the two kids is undoubtedly the Judas bug. Peter is surprised, knowing that the Judas bugs were engineered only to live one generation. Susan is baffled as to how this has happened but knows that they have to get more information. Not only was the specimen confirmed to be a Judas bug, but it was also just a hatchling. The Judas bug was designed to die, but it's been breeding. The following day, Peter and Susan meet up with the kids at a subway station and access an old maintenance room. Manny is also at the same station with Chewy polishing shoes. Susan asks the kids if they'd seen some kind of egg sac for the bugs, but the kids say they didn't. Susan and Peter enter the old room but see nothing out of the ordinary. Susan drops some beads, and they fall down a hidden hole behind a metal cabinet. Peter's flashlight falls in, and they try to reach in. Susan gets her arm in but doesn't see a creature on the other side examining her arm. 
Just before it bites, a policeman, Leonard, enters. Susan gets her arm out, and Peter and Leonard get into an argument. Leonard wants them out and tells them they can't continue without a permit. Meanwhile, Susan meets Chewie and Manny. She discovers that Chewie is a talented savant, able to tell the shoe size and brand of any shoes just by the footsteps. The two kids later head into a different part of the train yard looking for the egg sac. They find a slimy sack, looking like the egg sac Susan showed them. They try to pry it open but a creature comes up behind them. One of the kids shines a flashlight and sees that the creature looks like a giant insect. The other kid falls, and the one with the flashlight gets stabbed through the chest. The creature then attacks the other kid. The following day, Susan meets with her colleague and mentor, Dr. Gates, and informs him about what she's discovered. Gates theorizes that some of the Judas bugs may have survived. Susan affirms that the Judas bugs all died during experiments. Gates nods, but the world is a different place. He speculates some of them may have found a way. Even a tiny portion of the bugs could have lived and developed into a whole colony. Back in Manny's apartment, Chewie is awake staring at the quarantine building. He hears strange sounds coming from inside and goes in to investigate. He finds a chapel with everything covered up, and the sounds get louder. He then sees a figure approaching that looks like a person in an overcoat. Another creature comes up behind him, and they come closer. At a water treatment plant, workers fish out some sort of creature from the filtering tanks and initially suspect it to be a toddler. Upon closer inspection, they realize they'd need an expert on insects. The following day, Susan gets a call to get to the water treatment plant. She arrives shortly with her friend, and they examine a specimen. A worker takes it out of the freezer and shows it to Susan and her friend. The worker tells them that they find all sorts of things in the filtering tanks, but this looks different. He reveals it, and Susan sees that it's a Judas bug but almost as big as a dog. Her friend takes pictures, and Susan tells her to have them delivered to Dr. Gates for a detailed analysis. Meanwhile, Manny discovers that Chewie is missing. He sees Chewie's window open and speculates that he may have gone into the building next to them. Peter, Josh, and Leonard arrive back at the train station and see a gaping hole in the wall. They go in carrying lab equipment, hoping to get a sample or maybe find the Judas nest. Leonard tells them that the sections head to the lower levels, and some of the levels are under-maintained. They go down several stories underground. Meanwhile, Manny calls the police but gets his report waitlisted. He then tries to find a way into the building but instead finds an entrance into the sewer. Manny heads down with nothing but a lighter. Peter gets a call from Susan but gets reception. They then agree to meet at the train station as Susan needs to tell Peter what she found at the water treatment plant. Gates examines the creature found at the plant with Susan's friend. Gates discovers that the specimen isn't just a one-off mutation but is actually a member of a complex colony. Susan then arrives at the train station but waits for Peter by the entrance. Leonard, Josh, and Peter head deeper in and find a room with feces all over the walls and hanging from the ceiling. Susan then examines the photograph they took of the creature from the water treatment plant and focuses on two pictures. She takes two parts and holds them next to each other, the bug's appendages forming what looks like a human skull. She soon realizes that she's alone at the station. She tries to walk to the entrance to the underground but sees a shadow of a person standing at the edge of the platform. She tries calling out but gets no response. She then decides to walk away, but the figure reveals itself as a giant Judas bug the size of a person. Susan sees it and starts running, but the Judas bug takes her and flies off into the tunnel. Peter and Josh gather specimens from the walls while Leonard stands on an old wooden platform, looking at the remnants of the old subway. A minor Judas bug comes up to him, and he squishes it. Peter sees this and rushes to save it but is too late. Both men are now standing on the platform when it gives way. They both fall to the ground, and Josh is left alone above. Leonard tasks Josh to go back and get help. Josh hesitates, saying he won't find a way back, but realizes he has no choice but to go as there's no means of Leonard or Peter getting back up. Susan wakes up finding herself deep inside the sewers. She sees several bodies, including the priest's body, and grabs a metal pipe to defend herself. She explores around, trying to find a way out but sees more tunnels in all directions. She sees light and approaches it. Looking up, she sees people walking above ground. She tries to scream for help, but instead of attracting people's attention, she gets the attention of one of the Judas bugs. A bigger Judas bug comes to attack her, but she impales it with the pipe and runs. Another bug comes chasing after her, but she escapes through a maintenance hole opening. Josh tries to find his way back but gets sidetracked and sees a metal door. He opens it up, revealing several Judas egg sacs. He sees one of the Judas bugs inside, but he sneaks away. 
he slowly and silently tries to make it out and sees an opening above. He tries to get up, but the platform but falls, making a loud thud. This awakens the Judas bug. Josh hurries back up, reaching for a rope, but the Judas bug catches him. Josh desperately reaches for the rope, but blood sprays all over him from below, and he starts bleeding from the mouth. Josh then falls back down. Susan looks up at the metal maintenance hole cover above her, hearing movement. She's surprised to see Manny appear. Peter and Leonard explore around the chasm, believing Josh would be returning soon with help. Leonard sees an old train car, telling Peter details about it, but Peter is uninterested. They soon hear footsteps from around the corner. Manny appears, telling them about Susan. They help Susan get back up, but a Judas bug hears them and starts coming for Susan. They reach down for Susan and drop one of the lights. As the light falls, they see a Judas bug flying up for Susan. They pull Susan up, close the lid, and start running. They head back to the large chasm and try to find cover in the train car. Leonard fires several rounds at the Judas bug, but it keeps coming. The bug gets stuck at the door, and Leonard keeps firing. The bug tries to pull itself up but ends up tearing itself apart. It crawls under one of the shelves, and Peter helps Leonard trying to get it out so they can kill it. They drag the Judas bug out, and Leonard drops his guard. The bug then springs back to life, slashing Leonard's leg. Leonard fires more bullets at the bug, finally killing it. They lock themselves inside the train car, and Peter tends to Leonard's wounds. Manny helps Susan examine the dead bug, and she sees that the insect has developed organs, specifically, lungs. Susan speculates that when she accelerated the Judas metabolism, she inadvertently accelerated their breeding cycle as well. In three years, the Judas could have reproduced over several hundred thousand generations, making them have accelerated evolution. Peter is in disbelief, but Susan maintains that apes turned into humans in just 40,000 generations. With the Judas going through several hundred thousand, there's no telling what they could have evolved into. Susan explains that animals in the wild sometimes evolve to mimic their predator. The reason why Judas bugs have stayed hidden for so long may be a result of this. Susan surmises that the Judas could have evolved to mimic humans. A swarm of Judas bugs then charge the train car. Susan sees that blood from Leonard's wound is attracting them. She then takes the dead bug scent glands and rubs them all over the cabin. She tells everyone to rub it against the cracks to repel the bugs. This could mask the scent of Leonard's blood. The Judas bugs soon stop and leave them alone. Leonard finds an old map of the train station and sees that they may have a chance to escape. They need to switch the tracks and rewire a fuse box to get the train going and get it to the nearest exit. Peter then decides it should be him and Manny who should go out. Manny and Peter rub the scent glands all over themselves and split up. Manny heads of the track switch while Peter goes to the fuse box. Peter quietly makes his way down the tracks but comes face to face with a Judas bug. He tries to stay still, and the Judas bug walks over him. He rubs more of the scent gland on himself. Susan speculates that the Judases that have been attacking them must be female as the males are smaller, have a lighter color, and can't fly. If they find and kill the single fertile male in the colony, they could potentially wipe them all out. Manny searches for the track switch but instead finds Chewie. Manny tries to get Chewie to come with him, but a Judas bug comes up behind him and stabs him through the chest. Chewie screams, watching Manny die. Peter gets the fuse box running, and the lights turn on. Leonard turns the train's power on, and it starts moving. Susan finds Chewie in the track switch, and she takes Chewie with her. Peter also finds a small dumbwaiter that could also be a way to the surface. Leonard gets the train moving forward, but it runs into a problem and starts smoking. Peter reunites with Susan and Chewie, and they try to hide from the Judas bugs. Leonard sees Judas's swarming the group and decides to step out of the train. He tries to get the Judas's attention by singing and letting himself bleed. The Judases then charge Leonard. With the coast clear, Peter, Chewie, and Susan head to the dumbwaiter. Susan and Chewie get in, but Peter gets separated when more bugs appear. He tries pulling them up, but the bugs charge him. Peter crawls through a small tunnel and finds himself in the nest. He has the chance to destroy these creatures once and for all. A bug sees Susan and Chewie had made it up the dumbwaiter and surprisingly understands how it works. It starts trying to cut the cable holding up the dumbwaiter, but Susan and Chewie make it out just in time. The dumbwaiter falls, trapping the bugs underground. Peter sees gas pipes running all over the nest and takes an axe, smashing the pipes open. Flammable gas leaks out, filling the room. The bugs chasing after him break the steel plate open and almost get through to him, but Peter takes a lighter and tries to ignite the gas. The lighter malfunctions and falls into the water below. Peter takes the axe, bashing it against steel to produce a spark that he hopes would ignite the gas. 
Just as the Judas bugs descend on him, Peter creates a spark, and the entire sewer system explodes. On the surface, utility hole covers are launched into the air, cars are ignited, the ground rumbles, and fire bursts out from the sewers. Susan gains consciousness and sees Chewie, but the fertile male Judas bug appears. Chewie is frozen in fear as the Judas bug approaches him. Susan wounds herself to attract the bug's attention and runs towards an oncoming train. The Judas bug runs after her, and right before the train runs them over, she jumps out of the way. The Judas bug gets squished and dismantled under the train's wheels, and Susan finds Chewie. Firefighters, police, and medical personnel swarm the streets as they try to get everything under control. Gates tells Susan that all the bugs have been exterminated. From the subway exit, Peter ascends. Susan and Chewie rush to him, and the three all hug intimately. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.